World Earth Hour. When was it? March. Hmm? This year it was on March 26. Normally it is celebrated on the last Saturday of March. Last Saturday of March, that is what 26 March. It is uh, celebrated by whom? Who, which is the agency? World Earth, Earth Hour is celebrated by? Question may be that only, na? we have date with nahi puchega. Which is the agency? Hmm? It is by WWF. What is that? World Wrestling Federation. Kya hai? Okay, World Wide Fund for Nature. So, this was initiated this World Earth Hour. What is that we do in World Earth Hour? 10 minutes. Then the second ball is open and 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 open. From 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. on Saturday, on the last Saturday of March, we are asked to, I mean the global society are asked to switch off the lights for one hour. Okay. So that we can conserve some energy. This is a support to conservation of energy. Non-essential, all non-essential lights we try to switch off to conserve energy 8.30 to 9.30. But the problem is, you know, we are not taking it seriously. India mein kisi ko pata bhi nahi hoga. So we have to educate. People are not aware. We are not doing anything. We don't participate also in such things. Such chota chota cheez mein participate hi nahi karte. Okay. So uh, it is uh, 180 countries are participating. But of course, uh, awareness among the people also should be there, which is not happening. So, in their local time, 8.30 to 9.30 in their local time, that is the concept here. So, non-essential lighting has to be switched off, that is the idea. So, to create awareness about the problems of the nature and the problem. So, this year in 2022, the theme was shape our future. And uh, this worldwide fund, uh, you know, the WWF, it is the largest grassroots movement for environment or rather the save earth or, you know, what you call world earth hour is considered to be the largest grassroots movement for environment. Okay, largest grassroots movement for environment. And if you look at WWF, it is an international non government organized NGO which was founded in 1961. And their main focus is on what? Uh, that nature's preservation, preservation, preservation of wilderness and reduction of human impact on environment. Reduction of human impact on environment. So, these are the two main focus areas.
and WWF is the world's largest conservation organization. It has branches in 100 countries, more than 100, 100 countries and supported more than 3000 projects. Since 1995, in the last 25 years, they have spent more than 1 billion dollars and more than 55 percent of its funding come from individuals. Individuals are funding, it is not big corporate houses, people like you and me are contributing more than 55 percent, but even World Bank, USAID, all corporates, all are funding, but almost uh, more than half of the money comes from individuals. So, basically they want to stop the degradation of the planet's natural environment, you know, the save, okay. that is for very preservation of wilderness and reduction of human impact on environment, so that human beings can live in harmony with nature, that is what. And this uh, WWF is also now similar to UNESCO, they are also doing a great job. One big uh, project by them is the Living Planet Report. Living Planet Report, it is published in every two years, every two years since 1998. and it is, they have a living planet index also, then it also, so there is a living planet index and there is also an a concept of ecological footprint. So, living planet report and living planet index that is a part of the activities of WWF. Then a major theme is the concept of ecological footprint. Then I already said the initiative called earth hour we have already seen and also they have a concept or rather the program called debt for nature swap. debt for nature swap. Okay. What do you mean by this debt for nature swap? See many uh, smaller countries, the developing countries, or organizations in developing countries have taken lot of debts from developed countries. Suppose uh, from USA, some corporation has given some loan to say India, some project which we are supposed to pay back. Now in this debt for nature swap may WWF will come and say to the agency which paid loan to India, unko bolega bhai, you leave this loan, I mean do not ask for this loan to get back or rather you write off your loan. Okay, suppose 100 million dollars, so this US company agreed to write off, but instead then WWF will come to India or the Indian agency which took the loan which they are supposed to pay back, do not pay them back to the US company, instead fund a project for saving the nature. Suppose these fellows will have to pay 100 billion dollars or whatever the amount fixed. That amount you are not paying back to the rich country organization. Instead, we are asking with the help of WWF, they will fund some project which will help in improving the ecology ecosystem of that region. Okay. So, this project has been initiated by WWF in a big way. 
So a big fellow is not asked to pay anything immediately. So the, when they say they will have a lot of problem, but if we say no, okay, you just forgive that loan, that debt, or at least the fifty percent you give up, something like that. So in that case, that money has been diverted for protection and uh, preservation of nature. So this is a but it's not that they have you know collected huge amounts but a couple of billion dollars they have already collected using this okay and these projects are used for protection and preservation of nature so that is the concept of this debt for nature swap program by wwf okay so this wwf is world wide fund for nature they are focusing on six areas of course that is food water fresh water especially climate then wildlife forest and oceans food climate fresh water wildlife forests and oceans right anyway now what do you mean by ecological footprint hmm hmm see basically how much we use the natural resources for our day to day survival okay or our day to day life see as the society develops what will happen to the ecological footprint increases or decreases it will increase because now we use so much of resources we use so much of electricity ab din mein bhi if you just step outside the room it will be so hot and you cannot even see properly because of the glare of the sunlight but still inside day time what are we doing only without this light without this lighting it will be almost dark inside the room you will sir light chala gaya humse nahi hoga hum nahi pad rahe hum ja rahe you would have immediately revolted and walked out right so don't you think it is a misuse of ha huh? misuse of all these resources in a way where natural daylight could have been used we are not even thinking of using it right so as the society develops and grows this ecological footprint increases so basically ecological footprint is the measure of human impact on environment is a measure of human impact on environment and uh, or the quantity of nature it takes to support people the quantity of nature it takes to support people or an economy the quantity of nature it takes to support people or an economy that is what we are talking about the ecological footprint so it's basically an ecological accounting system for our day to day life on an average what is that we are taking from nature how much natural resources we are using how much we are consuming that is what we are so it's an ecological accounting system ecological footprint it is an ecological accounting system and in fact you know uh, along with wwf this ecological footprint is measured by an agency called global footprint network 
global food print network global food print network which was established in 2014 sorry uh, it is not i mean uh, we are saying this global footprint network in 2014 they have established that right now we human beings are using 1.7 times of resources one point seven times of natural capital or resources or natural capital which earth can regenerate which earth can regenerate or we are saying that the human ecological footprint the human ecological footprint is equal to 1.7 planet earths if you say what do you mean by this human ecological footprint is equal to 1.7 planet earths meaning yeah we are using more than what we are what the earth is capable of producing or regenerating or renewing so uh, we people are eating 1.7 times the capacity of earth right now so after some time what will happen a stage will come whereby things will uh, you know collapse okay so that is why this uh, ecological footprint uh, analysis is very important and it is uh, you know this is a, a crucial study for sustainable development this is crucial crucial for sustainable development studies so our lifestyle goods and services industry all you know how much we are using how much we are using beyond our capacity that's what we are trying to and this global uh, footprint network which i said global footprint network this was established in 2003 not in 2014 in 2003 it's an it's a think tank it's an independent think tank based in uk belgium and switzerland global footprint network it is based in uk belgium and switzerland it's an ngo okay so ecological footprint but i am just giving you one small homework also for you there is another word which they always use bio capacity ye ghar ja ke ek bar dekh lena okay search in the internet and get what do you mean by bio capacity this is also a word which is very regularly used these days okay global ecological footprint and bio capacity so there are some connection just see that okay so then i was talking about the living planet index that is also part of the you know living planet index so this is again this living planet index is an indicator of global biological diversity indicator of
global biological diversity and how do you know about this i mean this by this living planet index is an index okay how much is the biodiversity but this biodiversity index is calculated by studying the vertebrates okay the vertebrate population okay this is by studying the vertebrate population so they try to study all the vertebrates in the world please remember vertebrates evolved around 543 million years ago before 543 million years no vertebrate only invertebrates were there okay so and this is done by or rather this living planet index is by wwf and the zoological society of london wwf and zoological society of london so so basically you know they are studying the trends in the vertebrate population in the world and using that they are trying to come out with some conclusions about what is happening to our biodiversity so they have studied in the latest in 2020 the latest report the living planet index and the report it is a biennial report I mean, every 2 years it comes out so they have studied i think almost more than 20000 populations meaning various vertebrate populations 20000 plus vertebrate populations were studied out of which uh, 4000 plus species of mammals birds reptiles okay species of mammals birds reptiles amphibians fishes okay all put to the for uh, you know 4000 species were studied and uh, they have kept a you know bench benchmark of 1970 as the benchmark what is the population at that time and what is the population now that is what they are trying to study so so they have studied more than 4000 plus species of mammals birds fishes amphibians etc and they found that the vertebrate population has declined by 68% between 1970 and 2016 68 percent decline in the vertebrate population decline not increase human beings we are multiplying okay all other vertebrates we have managed to kill and reach this level okay 68 percent and according to this study this living planet index deforestation and agricultural expansion are the two fundamental reasons okay deforestation and agricultural expansion and you know 94% decline in the tropical sub regions of americas what is this region facing tropical sub regions of americas 94% decline that is the largest almost entirely destroyed to kahan ho gaye brazil and you know amazon forest and the surrounding region khatam kar rahe within no time in your lifetime itself you will find barren land in amazon koi amazon forest hi nahi hoga tumhare lifetime mein मेरे लाइफ टाइम में शायद नहीं हो पाएगा 
ओके बट वी कैन हैव ए कॉम्पिटिशन देखते हैं कौन पहले मरेगा सो ओके बट अकॉर्डिंग टू साइंटिस्ट बाई टू थाउजेंड एंड सिक्सटी आई होप यूल बी देर होगा नहीं होगा यस सर मतलब बोलो तो सही सो बाई टू थाउजेंड एंड सिक्सटी इफ द करंट डिफॉरेस्टेशन कंटिन्यूज एमेजॉन रीजन विल नॉट हैव एनी फॉरेस्ट वी आर केपेबल ओके वी ह्यूमन बींग्स आर केपेबल ऑफ एलिमिनेटिंग एमेजॉन फॉरेस्ट बाई टू थाउजेंड एंड सिक्सटी इट सीम्स इफ वी कंटिन्यू द करंट ट्रेंड्स इन डिफॉरेस्टेशन द अमाउंट ऑफ फॉरेस्ट विच वी आर डिस्ट्रॉइंग एवरी मिनिट एवरी सेकेंड विच वी आर डूइंग ओके सो दैट इज दू नो डिफॉरेस्टेड एंड एग्रीकल्चर एक्सपेंशन ओके सो दिस लिविंग प्लान इंडेक्स इज द you know that is an index okay we are just by studying vertebrates we are seeing where we are going in which direction so because we cannot study all animals until we are actually declining okay so that is why we it was decided that around <coughs> vertebrates will be studied by just by studying vertebrates we will have some idea about all these things and uh, zoological uh, you know society of london which is established in 1826 okay Is that S L Society of London, which is established in 1826? They are the uh, major partner in this, and also it was said that you know in this 20 report, freshwater species, freshwater species, they have declined by 84 percent. Since 1970s, 1970, fresh water species. That is why, you know, you go to any river, no fishes in that. Very, you know, rare to get. You ask your, uh, you know, grandfather and all type people, they will tell. You know, so many species, so many varieties, so many numbers of fishes and all. I still remember. you know if you step into some of these rivers in my nearby areas in where i was born you know fish will come and bite your you know on uh, your legs you know small small fishes uh, and they will eat the dead skin of our legs i will just sit inside uh, put your uh, you know legs inside the water small fishes will come and bite abhi to bite chodo ek fish dekhne you will not even find one we cannot even see one because the kind of pollution and uh, unmindful sand mining and the rivers are no more uh, pristine clean water no more you will find so it's totally different now so 84% reduction in the fresh water species okay and according to iucn what is iucn international union for conservation of nature but there is another the red list comes from them hai na iucn list so it says one third of fresh water species are now threatened with extinction one third of fresh water species are threatened with extinction and this report has also this uh, living planet index report has saying that mega fauna what is mega fauna flora is ah uh, fauna is animals right big animals okay the big species of obviously all are vertebrates they are more vulnerable because of the human exploitation anthropogenic threats and like over exploitation large fishes are heavily impacted again because of dam construction and all fishes cannot move in the rivers now you know it very well how difficult it is for them so the block its migratory routes and so many issues of that nature because of dam construction and according to this Uh, you know uh, this study living planet index the ecological footprint 
has exceeded 100 percent in 1970 itself. Now it is already said that 1.7 is the ecological footprint. So around 1970 itself we have exceeded the ecological footprint. That means the capacity to regenerate or rather renew what we consume and what is re renewed that capacity was over in 1970 itself. So what are the threats to the biodiversity? Hmm? If you ask what are the threats to biodiversity? Ah, human being we are the biggest threat. Okay, so biodiversity, we can say, uh, you know, change in habitat, land use, sea use, everywhere, you know, we are changing everything, uh, agriculture, deforestation, over exploitation, agriculture, deforestation, over exploitation. Because, you know overfishing and you know, over grazing everywhere the same problem right then pollution the environmental pollution sea pollution river pollution lake pollution you know in water it is all atmospheric pollution then uh, another big problem for biodiversity today is the invasive species What is invasive species? No, no, no. Oh, invasive species. Ne. What is invasive species? Hmm? Huh? No, no. Oh, okay. Okay. But, kuch or. Invasive species. Ah, yeah, these species are not from that region. First thing is that you are bringing a species from outside, then they will be become the bosses. Okay, certain weeds, for example, you import a weed from outside and now they become dominant species of that region, killing the locals. Okay, dominating that region. Any good example of an invasive species? Huh? Eucalyptus, yeah, sabse easiest. Aap dekho, sarkar ka, what you call, kya program hai? Kya forestry program hai? Social forestry program. Government of India only initiated. We wanted to plant new trees to improve the vegetation of the country. Idea was good. And the forest department selected eucalyptus which is very easy to grow, even in dry conditions it will not die. And when we started a social forestry program, we wanted to provide 5 F's to people through social forestry. What are they? Food, fodder, fiber, fertilizer and fuel. 5 F's through social forestry. Bhot badiya, khana bhi milega, fodder bhi milega, fiber bhi milega, fertilizer bhi milega, maja gaya. Finally, thoda fuel bhi milega. And the government asked, na, with good intention, our political leaders might have asked our bureaucrats, jaldi kuch karo. Forest department ko bola, IFS officers are sitting there, forest service. Bola turand eucalyptus lao Australia se. It is an Australian species, very easily it can grow. But what they forgot is, this eucalyptus cannot provide any of this five. No food from eucalyptus, eucalyptus tree you can see now all roadsides, canal side, railway side, everywhere. No fodder, why? Because no animal can eat anything from that. 
no fiber in it and the eucalyptus leaves are acidic and it is no more no fertilizer at all even for as a you know uh, 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 you know as a foliage if it is falls down the leaves are not fertilized cannot be used as a fertilizer and even the calorific value of the eucalyptus trees are so less that even if you burn it even if you burn it it cannot provide you good uh, you know as a as a fuel or a as a uh, you know fuel wood it cannot be used the only use is eucalyptus oil can be taken uh, you know then plywood can be made is an industrial use is there but no social forestry use but we cultivate and in the process what is the problem with eucalyptus eucalyptus can kill all the surrounding plants there it becomes so dominant in that region that no other plant can grow anywhere you see where eucalyptus is grown below that eucalyptus tree nothing will grow you will not even find an animal or a bird in that eucalyptus tree even birds will not nest in eucalyptus tree except maybe crows usko aur koi jagah hi nahi mil raha tha theek hai yaar eucalyptus mein kar denge but otherwise you will not find any other animal no squirrels in eucalyptus tree moving around usko kya karega wo kuch nahi milta unko and we call it. so these species we call it as invasive then so many invasive species are there by the way but you know so invasive species is a problem then of course today the biggest threat to biodiversity is climate change and and the biggest victim in climate change is animals or plants are more affected by climate change animals or plants hmm animals or plants why why animals any sab theek hai but why animals why do you say that animals are more affected by than plants because of climate change ha nahi nahi adaptability theek hai ab ye batao animal hai koi cat hai man lo garmi lag raha hai wo kya karega cat it will go to the shade चलना है जरा चल के साइड में खड़ा हो जाओ सपोज ए प्लांट इज स्टैंडिंग देर आप क्या बोले मैं भी आ रहा हूं तुम्हारे साथ कौन है प्लांट्स आर इमोबाइल इफ इफ इन ए पर्टिकुलर रीजन इन ए स्क्वायर किलोमीटर ऑफ एरिया इफ ए पर्टिकुलर स्पीशीज इज देयर इफ क्लाइमेट चेंज हैपन्स देयर व्हाट विल हैपन टू दैट प्लांट इट कैन नॉट मूव एनी वेयर इट हैज टू डाई इतना रॉकेट साइंस तो है ही नहीं इसमें you and me if you are standing in hot sun what will you do theek hai bahut garmi lag raha hai chalo side mein we will search for a shade animals will move fishes will move if the water is water temperature is increasing in tropical waters what will happen to the fishes there fishes will try to migrate thoda thandi jagah pe chala jayega it can move but if there is a uh, you know coral reef there immobile wo kya karega wo bhi bole main bhi aa raha hu but it cannot move here come on so very simple. so who will die more plants will die plants we lose see the biodiversity loss is more in plants than in animals because of climate change because when you are changing the ecosystem animals can still adjust a bit even vertebrates in vertebrates you know ants some snails what will happen? still even a snail can move but not a plant right so please don't say that animals are more animals are more visible for us and mega fauna is more visible more you know eye catching for us but the reality is uh, you know animals are uh, you know i'm not saying animals are not affected but more high profile animals are visible for us but uh, you know the biodiversity more biodiversity among the plants and they will be killed if there is a change no doubt so climate change is a big problem and even uh, migratory patterns of birds now migratory birds are not reaching uh, india and all we are seeing it very clearly migratory patterns are going to change so anyway so there is a huge threat to uh, you know biodiversity if a question is there you can you have to answer all those aspects also and so living planet index i mean if you have to know a bit more you please search also a bit on this living planet index and 2022 report will be there 
shortly every two years it comes out okay and it is by wwf and zoological society of london okay is that sl then iucn also i mean those who are especially appearing for next year please look into this iucn red list okay and there are seven kitna categories hai seven or nine categories please search kitna hai iucn endangered vulnerable critically endangered extinct all categories are there you please study look into as a homework iucn red list okay see you then bye bye please study what